Brar on. Did I say your last name right? Yep. <laughs> you did. Okay, perfect. <laughs> um, so today we have Julie on. She actually um, is just such a fantastic virtual friend. You're going to hear my baby in the background. I just had a baby nine weeks ago. And so I am feeding him. Last field by faith. Um, he started crying and I had to nurse him live and it was just not as fun as I would like this to go. So I'm feeding him on the side here, but um, we'll jump right in. So after the sudden and unexpected death of Julie's husband in 2012, um, holistic nutritionist and entrepreneur Julie Brar actually became passionate about health and wellness and focused on her quality of life, um, which as you can see here, you're looking lovely, girlfriend. Um, no filters, so baby. <laughs> no filters. Yes, I love it. Um, since then, she's actually been able to make a comeback from having hypothyroidism um, and has been able to maintain a very healthy lifestyle. And now she's able to help folks like you and myself out there to lead and live a more healthy and holistic life. So today, Julie, thank you again for being here. We'll jump right in. Um, and can you tell me a little bit about what stands out about your childhood and how it relates to your life today and everything that you're doing today and where you are and in, in your journey of life? Oh, well, first of all, I love the baby sounds in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully we can get them to fall asleep. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say in a way, life has always been sort of pushing me in this direction. So when I was a kid, um, one of the things, so there's two things that stand out for me. So the first thing is my parents did not bring junk food into our house, right? So I hear so many parents complain to me, well, I can't get my kids to eat healthy. I can't, well, you are the parent. My parents went to the grocery store. We were never welcome to come to the grocery store. And they would only bring home fruits and vegetables and healthy whole foods. So I have memories of when I would go home from, uh, like I had to go home uh, at lunchtime because we didn't, we didn't do lunch at school. So I would go home for lunch. And I remember cutting up all kinds of different fruits and making myself a fruit salad. Um, like a lot of immigrant families, my, my grandmother lived with us. And so she was wow. always around, you know, <laughs> was always watching what we were doing. So that's the first memory I have is like, we did not go to fast food restaurants. We didn't do any of that. But how old, huh? can I ask how old you were, Julie, actually, when you were cutting up these fruits and things for your, um, your probably lunch? Like nine, 10 years old. Wow. Yeah. Incredible. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. My, my mother, like, here's one of the other things is my mom had us kids helping out in the kitchen when we were young. Like I fully remember on weekends on Saturday morning, they would come home from grocery shopping. And then I would spend the rest of my morning helping my mom cut up vegetables and do some meal prep for the week. And, and, uh, so yeah, we were, I was exposed to it really early. But then the other memory I have, which is not so fond, but also pushed me towards learning about nutrition and health when I was a kid, was my grandfather passed away uh, very suddenly from a heart attack. Um, it was like one Friday evening. And it's weird, like what sticks in your memory. Um, but like, just like he dropped dead in front of us. I'm so in front of you too. Yeah. And so oh because of what happened to him, I started learning about like, like, as a teenager, I was reading about cholesterol and health and, you know, just reading things that kids my age were not reading um, about how dare how we shouldn't be having dairy because we're not cows. But also like how the what is in cow's milk is so different from what is in human breast milk as you know if you're breastfeeding right now and so oh, yeah. um <laughs> so yeah those are some things that kind of stick out from my childhood so i think i was kind of always destined for this <laughs> i mean i feel like you've had so many traumatic experiences happen in your life that have really put you on this path whether by choice or by destiny i mean it just feels like to your point like it's these things have really put you on this path of just focusing on health and wellness yeah 
For sure, my, my husband's death was another thing. And then of course, I actually just wrote in my newsletter today, I was actually in a car accident five years ago. And that was... <laughs> Oh yeah. my gosh. Oh now my people, gosh. I am okay. I, I do I do the inner work. So I'm not falling apart here. But it was just like it was again, it was a redirection from the universe. The universe has these re has has put like these redirections in front of me multiple times for me to really examine what I'm doing. And if it's really in alignment with what I'm supposed to be doing. So yes, I keep getting pulled back. To the health. I'm like, praise <laughs> God, you're here and you're alive and everything's okay. <laughs> I feel like you've had so many experiences. Yeah. So, how did you? I mean, in line with that, how did you decide that, like, being a holistic nutritionist? It's so long. I have to always look to remember holistic nutritionist and entrepreneur. How'd you get on this? I mean, I know those stories kind of led to where you are today, but like, what did it look like a few days, weeks, months leading up to you getting to become a health? you know, a holistic nutritionist and entrepreneur. So I think it, it started initially with my husband's death. That was kind of like my first wake up call of uh, really understanding that we're on this planet for a very finite amount of time and we could go at any point. It just really got me thinking about my own personal health. At that point, I hadn't really been paying attention. And, and so that was part of it. But I kind of was going through such a heavy grieving process that I kind of went back to what I was doing, which was teaching yoga and um, just trying to kind of get through what I was getting through. But that event is what led to me being diagnosed with hypothyroidism. And then wow. five years ago when I was in the car accident and my, at that point, like five years ago, my life was really busy. I was teaching a lot of classes. I was, juggling auditions i was kind of like in the thick of it and then it all stopped because i got injured and i was in i was in two casts i was in a cast on my right hand and i was a cast on my left leg so it was like oh literally what the universe was like stop girl just stop so i stopped and i like had time to think about it and at that point in time i had some pretty like debilitating symptoms from my hypothyroidism that i was trying to ignore and i was like okay i can't ignore this anymore what do i need to do and none of the practitioners i was working with were really helping and i was taking pills every day and it wasn't helping so i was like you know what i'm gonna go back to school i feel like i need to shift careers i need wow. to have something else to do so i that was like when I enrolled in school, <laughs> I decided wow. to go back to nutrition school. And then two years later, I officially like 2019 launched my online business. But yeah, oh it was gosh. like it was a redirection. But I mean, everything that I learned in that in those two years, and I even like I'm always learning everything I, I learn, I apply, I yeah. see how it can benefit. And that's really where I'm sharing from is from real experience of having gone through this and and it, you know getting back on the road to health can be very frustrating i understand but it's also like the the best thing you can do for yourself right like exactly. having energy to live your life to be able to take care of your family to do whatever it is that you want to do without feeling depleted and compromised Okay, so I didn't send this question in advance to you. I do this to everybody. If you look back at some of the past interviews, you'll see I do this all the time. Um, but I have to ask, you talk about being in school and making this crazy shift immediately, right? Like you made this shift. It was like you had all these challenges. You have a car accident, and then you realize, okay, now it's time to go back to school. Um, what did it look like balancing real life with some of those new changes that you wanted to make? Because, again, this is what this show is all about. I call it a show like I'm famous. I'm not. <laughs> but this is what this is all about. Truly, this series is all about having the, the I guess, the courage to yeah. make faith based decisions. So how did you how did that look for you? Uh Oh, um, how did that actually look for you? I'm going to mute myself so you can tell. No, us. That, that, that's okay. Um, hey, baby. Um, I think like, it's funny because now when I look back on it, I was like, holy smokes, I did a lot. But at the time, it was like my back was against the wall, um, literally. And I was recovering from this car accident. And I just knew, because I have enough wisdom 
and have enough experience to know that when the universe does these things, you get sick or there's an accident or something happens, someone dies. It's, it's literally an opportunity to just go inward and do some exploration. Hi, so cute. Um, hello. Hi. Oh, look at those cheeks. I just want to kiss them. Um, he's getting so big. <laughs> he's so oh, big. Wow. Look at those cheeks. Hi. Oh, hi, people. Hello. Hi, <laughs> um, okay, sorry. <laughs> so I just, I like shifted my schedule around so I was only teaching certain days so I have certain other days and thankfully you know I love I love online learning um I had the opportunity to do in class but I opted for online just because I knew I could make it work with my schedule and I just okay. like, pedal to the metal and I love it did it I did it because I really wanted to do it it was time for me to change and okay. I was tired of teaching classes. I was tired of running around to, you know, studio to studio. I just was done. I just needed something that was my own. And the other thing is, I also realized that, you know, I work hard, but I was tired of working that hard for other people. Exactly. And that honestly, I actually can relate to that in my own way. You know, it's, it's, it's nice to have something that's just yours. Yeah. that provides that flexibility not just health flexibility but and, and not just the physical right but also yeah. the emotional because we're all running around yeah. all over the place all day long and that affects our health physically so for yeah. those that don't that don't know about hypothyroidism and there's there's two right can you like give us an overview about what are thyroid you know what is what is the thyroid like give us an overview of like where does it sit? What does it do? And how does that affect your health? Like how does, you know, how does the thyroid influence health and well being? Yeah, so thyroid is, is a gland that sits in your throat. It's a butterfly shaped gland. Um, okay. And so there's usually two, well, there's be a few issues that happen with thyroid, but most people recognize that there's hypothyroidism, which is when your thyroid becomes sluggish. Um, so you start to put on weight and, and you might get constipated and there's like the whole slew of symptoms. Um, or you have hyperthyroidism, which is that you're, you're gonna tend to lose weight quickly um, and then there's a whole bunch of other symptoms uh, related to that. You may end up having diarrhea, body sweats, really accelerated heart rate. So neither, like a lot of people think when they think of the thyroid, they just think of metabolism. But it's much more than that because your thyroid also regulates your breathing, your heart rate, digestion. And so if it goes offline, it's going to affect a whole bunch of other systems in the body that's problematic and actually millions of Americans have thyroid issues and they go undiagnosed and untreated and actually being left untreated is really really serious it's a it's not something um, to ignore right um, even for a lot of people that I work with that have thyroid issues it's like you have to when, once there's a protocol you have to stick with it because now there's a weakness in your body and if you don't continue to support your thyroid what ends up happening is the symptoms will come back mm. right but it, whether they were hypothyroidism symptoms or hyperthyroid symptoms right and it for women who are trying to get pregnant if they have thyroid issues it can actually make getting pregnant a little bit more difficult so, oh, I'm so glad you touched on that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not it's not a benign thing. And and you know, the reason the thyroid could be having issues, it could be a signaling issues between between, you know, the pituitary uh, the hypothalamus and and the thyroid gland or it could be have to do with like I mean, pretty much every thyroid issue is related to poor gut health. Right? So there's probably nutrient absorption issues that are also going on. So have you seen it too, where kids have thyroid related issues? I feel like we talk so much about it at the adult level, but we yeah. don't really hear that much about it at the childhood level. And, and if so, I mean, 
again, another question. I'm sorry. You, you, I love this topic because I don't know much about the thyroid, to be honest. I've heard of people having challenges with it, but I don't know that much. So like, how does it in, like affect children as well? And it, is it, it less common because kids are usually in that early, those early stages of having the right nutrients if their parents are feeding them the right things? Like, how does that look? <laughs> That's the, the biggest myth out there. Oh, my God. Our food system is such a mess. Um, yeah, it's actually becoming more common for kids to have thyroid issues. You know? um, I do get messages from parents whose kids are getting diagnosed with hypothyroidism. And it could be related to, definitely related to poor diet, can be related to uh, poor gut health. Uh, stress, which is something that I think a lot of people overlook, is that when you're in a state of chronic stress, especially if you're in like extreme stress, um, it can trigger thyroid issues as well. So, you know, I know so we're all kind of used to living these stressed out lives and just like not even thinking about it, but having a body that's not able to regulate itself because it's in a state of con uh, constant f fight or flight. And to think that that's not going to have downstream effects is, is really um, not wise. <laughs> so uh, last random question, I promise I'm going to stick no, to the no. script, but like, what, what's the difference though, between like chronic stress and like, how do you differentiate everyday stress and chronic stress? I've heard like a lot of like, therapists talk about you know chronic stress is more like if you lived in like a bomb zone right mm -hmm. like where you're hearing you know war like a war zone like you're hearing war you're hearing bombings that's like chronic whereas like everyday stress is like you know your dog ate your homework <laughs> right so like what how would how do you differentiate or kind of categorize stress and how it affects like the type of stress that would influence our health well, I mean, the thing is, so in nature, like if you observe a dog or a cat, you know, and they have like, I have, I have dogs, right? And I see them when they are in a state I of I love stress. your dogs. <laughs> yeah, my dogs They're are so cute. Stress. Yeah. So <laughs> when you when my dogs are in a state of stress, they react to whatever it is, they might get agitated, barking, crying, whatever. And then they like shake it off. And they calm down right? They go nap or they do go drink some water or whatever. But for human beings, mm -hmm. oftentimes what's happening is that they are in a state of, you know, low grade, grade stress all the time, especially with women. They're juggling careers, they're juggling parenting duties, they're juggling running a household. And so they may not think of their everyday stress as stress, but it's like they just can't relax. Their body's never relaxed, you know, they can't sleep properly. And here's the other thing is like, I feel that. <laughs> yeah, when you're not, I know you're a new mom, second time over. Um, <laughs> when you're in like, when you're not sleeping properly, like, and, and Americans are chronically sleep deprived. So they're getting on average five hours sleep a night. When you're getting like six hours or less sleep a night for a week straight, your body actually push, pushes into insulin resistance. And then the other thing to realize is that when you're in a state of constant, okay, nobody get upset by what I'm saying. I'm just giving you information. When you're in a state of <laughs> like not getting enough sleep on a consistent basis, not only is it pushing your body into insulin resistance, but a lack of sleep by your body is automatically perceived as a state of stress. Oh my God. You, this is, so I you believe you're think, right. Don't, you may not think of it. You might be like, well, I just don't get a lot of sleep and whatever, right? Um, but you have to understand on, a, on your body's level, your body's in a state of stress, right? So nothing's happened. There's no bombs going off. Nothing's happened. You're just not sleeping enough. Well, oh your body, what happens is now you're, it's going to affect your hormones. It's going to affect your uh, hunger signals. It's going to affect how your body is holding weight. Like I'll have so many people come to me, they want to lose weight. And I'm like, how's your sleep? All right, we're going to talk and, about sleep. And what do you tell them as far as like getting more rest? And then we'll get back on track because I only have you for seven more minutes. I'm going to have to bring you back to talk about 
sleep in depth, right? At some point, yeah. but what, what are the um, top two or three things you tell them to get their sleep back on track? Well, especially I usually, when they have life changes going on already. Yeah. Like, what would you tell me? Uh, get off electronics earlier, you know, okay. uh, mm -hmm. a half hour to an hour beforehand, do some deep breathing meditation, if possible, it doesn't have to be like an hour thing, but just even a few minutes, like try and create some distance between yourself and your day. Um, and I mean, I personally take something called apothecary. I'm going to post about it later today, but I forgot to take it two nights ago. And I, my deep sleep, cause I measure my sleep. Uh, I had like 17% deep sleep. And then last night I remembered to take it. My deep sleep was at 35%. And I was like, yes. Whoa. Okay. We're looking for that post. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Okay. Sorry to take us off track. No, 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 no. That's, those are good tips though. Getting off of electronics early, you know, supplementing if you need to supplement. Um, so that's really good. So what did life look like before you became health conscious and how did that like, I just want to know more about like your experience pre Julie today, who's like yeah. very health conscious. Um, I just wasn't that aware of what I was putting in my body or how it was affecting me. So I think a lot of people are, they think they're doing pretty good. Like if I rate my, uh, my diet from 10 years ago, I was lacking in nutrients I wasn't really aware of like how things were impacting my health. And so, you know, I think that's why when my husband passed away, it was like so compromising for my body because I was depleted and I didn't know it. So it's heavy, honestly, it's yeah. heavy and it's crazy how the body can, everything that was like you said on under the surface came out once you went through this like extreme stress of like losing your husband um can you share a little bit about that experience since we're talking about it already like yeah i mean how it kind of it it pivoted everything right like at the time i was like I was working on a TV show as an actress i was producing a play i was like in this whole other life but I wasn't really taking care of myself, right? And I think a lot of us think that we have more time or you just, we kind of fall into the routine of day in, day out. And I would say one of the biggest myths that plague most people, pretty much everyone I talk to, is they think they're doing pretty good with their nutrition. But on a cellular <laughs> level, the body is completely deprived. Completely deprived. Oh. That's why they're stressed out, they're overwhelmed, and they just feel exhausted all the time. Do you find yourself taking a lot? He's like, I'm back, y'all. Don't forget about me. Do you find yourself taking a lot of, like, supplements then to make sure that you're getting all the nutrients no, you need? It, or is it, it purely not... diet through food? Like through well, food. first of all, getting what you need through diet right now is impossible. It's not possible. Impossible? It's impossible because unless you're able to grow your own food, which most of us aren't, the way that the food system is set up in America is it's set for maximum profit, not maximum nutrients, right? Just think about it. You go into a typical grocery store and there's usually a tiny little produce section. All that produce is conventionally grown in nutrient depleted soil. And then you've got aisles and aisles of boxes and, and cans and plastic that's not nutrition that's not nutrition that your body recognizes and a lot of people go okay well i'm going to supplement well here's the thing a lot of supplements are synthetic as well right so your body doesn't recognize that as food either right so then so what, do we, what do we do <laughs> well that's why like three years ago i shifted over to superfoods because obviously i was depleted my thyroid my hypothyroidism symptoms didn't get better even though i changed my diet i took out the inflammatory things and i still had issues because i was still depleted and then the other part of especially for thyroid issues is always gut health it's not do you have a gut issue or don't you have a gut issue if you have thyroid issues you have a gut issue and it's not about taking a probiotic as a lot of people think 
because most probiotics are not properly tested anyway. They're not properly vetted. Mm -hmm. So it's, and the thing is, if you don't have the diet to support a healthy gut microbiome, you're literally, it's like putting out a fire with a tablespoon of water at a time. <laughs> so it's what, just, what is a health, what, what constitutes a healthy gut? Like I, you know, I feel like some things are mainstream and they get to be super popular. You have, you hear so many people talking about a healthy gut. What is a healthy gut? What constitutes a healthy gut? And then we're probably going to have to wrap, Julie, because I don't know if you have extra time or not. But I've got I would a few love minutes. To like... I've got a few okay. minutes. Um, okay. But like, so as, as in life, with, with the gut, it's all about diversity. So just think of like what the foods you're mm -hmm. eating. If they're coming in boxes and plastic bottles and all that, like your gut microbiome th thrives on plant foods in a nutshell. And that's mm -hmm. veggies, fruits, <laughs> um, you know, nuts and seeds. And actually the more, and erring a lot more on the side of fruits and veggies, a lot more. Mm -hmm. Organic as well, as much as possible. And I know that in this time, this day and age, it's a little bit limiting because of the food prices. But, mm -hmm. um, but that's, that's just the reality of it is that the more, different types of plant fibers you can get into your body the more diversity like i know some people like to eat the same thing day after day after day after day you know what? that doesn't <laughs> that's work us. that's us sometimes you know it's like you yeah. have to vary it up so whole grains a uh, whole whole grains different lentils nuts and seeds but a lot more veggies and fruits like i'm telling people nine to twelve servings of veggies and fruits is where it where oh my it, gosh yeah and no so, most people don't get anywhere near that. Gosh, yeah, there's no way I'm getting close to that. So yeah. for the folks out there who are like, how do I know if I have a healthy gut or not? Like, what would you tell them? Like, what, what are some signals that your body sends if your gut is unhealthy? And I don't even know if that was in the questions, but I'm no, just but adding it up. So with you. if you're well i mean you're you're a mama of a, of a new baby so if the baby's not pooping you know you have issues right mm -hmm. and most he's people, taking a lot of poops yeah oh good <laughs> he's got a healthy guy um yeah so you need to but be he's gassy oh so there's there's something up there so yeah if you're gassy bloated if you're constipated or you have diarrhea those are definitely signs food sensitivities skin issues uh, so it's like if you're on either side of the spectrum, that's how you know. you should be right in the middle. That's what it sounds like you're saying. Like if you're pooping, if you're not pooping, or if you're pooping, if your poop is too loose, then you know yeah. that you need to happening. be pooping every day, two to three times a day, and those poops need to be formed. I always end up talking about poop. I um, love talking about poop. they. They need to be like a S curve I, ideally because like the, that's the shape of your GI tract if they're like mm. loose if they're coming out like pellets like there's something up <laughs> and if you're if you're not going to number two for days on end whoa red flag and that's not that's not a, a signal for you to go and have a laxative because that's not good either your body needs to learn how to go to the bathroom normally okay. without any aid and uh, there could be any number of things going on like stress really affects how we go to the bathroom but primarily it's because people don't have enough fiber in their diet they're not eating enough plants and they're probably doing okay. too much processed foods yeah for sure i definitely notice a difference and takeout i hope everyone listens to me when i say this we did a takeout challenge for the full month of october no takeout 30 days because being a pregnant mama, it was hard <laughs> for us to like, I mean, it's just crazy having multiple children, right? So that was our crutch takeout. And it's a mm -hmm. perfect excuse. Um, but we did a no takeout challenge. Today's the last day of our challenge. We didn't buy any takeout. We saved all that money. So we what? did an average of how much we were spending on takeout and started putting that money into like savings instead of spending it on trash food. Because Honestly, no matter honest, I'm at the point now where I'm like, no matter what restaurant you go to, they just add so much more salts and sugars and things that you have no control over. So mm -hmm. if I accidentally have vegetable oils, food, you don't know what exactly. they're doing with your food. Exactly. Um, I, I, I do. And we feel better and we've lost weight. I mean, I think I've lost like 
eight pounds just this month from not eating takeout. I mean, on top of like, I'm breastfeeding Breast. and all that. Yeah. But still, I mean, John feels good and looks good. My husband, I'm feeling good, looking good. Our oldest, who's 10, Jonah's like, oh gosh, are we, eating, are we able to eat takeout yet again? He misses it. But <laughs> but I told him, I said, buddy, you better get used to this new life because we're not doing it again. That was just because, you know, mommy was pregnant and we were busy, but that's not going to become the new norm again. And I, they just, they heavily salt everything. Now, if I eat something salty, it's like, Ugh, you know, that's way too much salt because yeah. it's just your body changes so much after not having it. So I think that's another thing that affects the gut too, if I were to guess, right? Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, fried food, processed foods, just, um, you know, too, too much salt in the diet, too much oil in the diet, um, alcohol. <laughs> okay, so alcohol, real quick. Um, so I'm going to do a speed round, if I can have you for like five more minutes. Yeah, five yeah, more minutes, it. speed round. I'm just going to fire off the questions that I sent you. So first question is, for the moms out there who are like, I just need my one glass of wine a night because I am just, you know, <laughs> I'm stressed out with these kids. I need my glass of wine. I'm not that mom. I'm not judging that mom. But what do you say to her? Is it okay for her to have her glass of wine every night? What Are we does talking it do to about the gut? health? <laughs> yes. Based on what does it do to the gut and the thyroid to have a glass of wine a night or a glass of wine a week? Or is there a cadence? Yeah, so alcohol for women, especially, we do not metabolize it as quickly as men do. And so it is very toxic. It is toxic for your brain, for your gut, for your liver. Um, and there's actually studies that show that alcohol consumption in women is linked to breast cancer. So I've shared this a few times. And it's funny how many crickets I get on my social media every time I put that out there. But if we're talking about health, it's there, there are, there are no health benefits to it. I know that they're, they tout these studies, like, you can eat grapes, if you if you're really wanting resveratrol. Oh, I'm tripping up. Yeah. You know what I'm, I'm saying? It's like, yeah. <laughs> and I understand the, the, the stress piece, but there's other ways to relieve stress, you can meditate, you can do breath work, you can read, you can call someone you can talk to your partner. Uh, find a healthier outlet for relieving stress. Um, and especially if you're dealing with thyroid issues, like it really affects with uh, affects T4 and T3. Um, and for me, as soon as I found that out, I was like, I'm done. I'm Did out. you replace it? Did you replace it with anything, Julie, like some other type of drink? Like a, I don't know, oh, a mocktail? Yeah. No, I mean, like, sometimes if I feel like something, I might have, like, a little bit of kombucha, but not really. Um, I just found okay. other Thoughts ways. Thoughts on kombucha. What are your thoughts about kombucha? I think a little bit is fine. Uh, you have to be kind of careful of where you're getting it from. Like, I know that there's kombucha that's, like, out there in plastic bottles. That's probably not the good one. Like, it's not the good stuff. Um I know some people who make their own, so I can get my hands on that. Um, but it's not something that I do a lot of just because of sugar. Right? Okay. And sugar yeah. is disaster for you guys. Okay. Okay, yeah. next question. Sorry, I want to touch on everything you're saying. We're going to have to bring you back. Um, specific foods someone should be refraining from indulging in to maintain a healthy gut and thyroid. Uh, sugar stay away from processed sugar. So I'm not talking about fruit. I'm talking about I'm talking about processed sugars. And that's even the natural sugars like a dog. What about coconut sugar? Still sugar, right? You have to think of like, how is your body <laughs> going to respond to it? It's going to treat it like sugar, it's going to spike insulin, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna affect the gut in a negative way. The thing about having a piece of fruit is it's always bound in fiber. And so that slows mm -hmm. down the release of the sugar. And so we don't have those spikes, right? Um, in terms of thyroid health, the reason that sugar is problematic is it drives inflammation in your body. So anything that is going to drive inflammation is something that you want to stay away from because your body's already inflamed. It's got a health condition, it's got a thyroid issue. So when you're 
putting more stress on the system, it makes it harder. So for sure, sugar, dairy is no bueno for gut and thyroid issues um, for a whole bunch of reasons. What uh, if alcohol, someone doesn't have like gut and thyroid issues? Like for those folks who are out there who maybe like don't really have an issue. Well, dairy is still linked to cancer. There's always that. So dairy is linked to breast cancer in women and prostate cancer in men. So there's that. Um, okay. I mean, just think about it logically. We're not cows. So we don't really need cow's milk or goat's milk. Um, we're supposed to breastfeed from our mom until we're weaned. And once we're weaned, we're supposed to eat food, like real food, right? Um, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for the dairy thing, but I stand by it. <laughs> it's okay. You know, I was vegan previously, yeah. and then I am not vegan now. I'd like to say I'm more plant-based now mm -hmm. with still eating meat here and there. You know, when I want it, I eat it. But I do see the difference. I'm not going to lie. I can't, I can't deny the fact that I see a difference in my body now that I eat, now that I'm in consuming dairy. I don't drink, I, would, I don't drink cow's milk, but it's no difference with me eating, you know, cheese. Right. And mm -hmm. I do notice a big difference. It, it's a difference. Um, even yeah. with my skin, I was sharing with um, Carol who was on here last month and I was talking to her and I'm like, look at my skin. I showed it on the live. My eczema started flaring up. So I even told John, I was like, I think I'm going to be <laughs> yeah. maybe not going full on vegan again, but slowly removing yeah, some of the dairy. Dairy is very problematic for skin issues. Um, anytime someone tells me they have eczema, I'm always like, oh, are you having dairy? Like the yeah. dairy got to go. I know. It, and it went crazy during pregnancy. So I know that that's like big. I know it's big. And a lot of people don't know this, but feeding young kids, like toddlers dairy, actually predisposes them to type 1 diabetes. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's and crazy. I literally had a conversation with a woman last week who got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and hypothyroidism when she was 11 years old. And now she has rheumatoid arthritis. So now we're dealing with these multiple health conditions at the same time. But the root cause is her poor diet, which is what we have to address. So, wow. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the thing, right? Like, a lot of people don't know this. They don't have this they information. Don't. And so how can people, yeah, how can people work with you, Julie? Like, what services do you offer? And are there any special projects you're working on? I don't want to take up too much more of your time, because I know we're already over by, like, 11 minutes. But, like, what should people, you know, come to you for? And how can they connect with you? I'll, I'll go ahead and wrap up. And then Maybe what I'll do is some of the questions that I did have, I might send them to you and let you just send me back some answers. And I'll, I'll be putting this on my blog anyway, like the recording okay. and all of the show notes. So I can yeah, include yeah. some of these <laughs> in the show notes. Um, the best way is like, you can always send me a DM on Instagram or go to my website and send me an email. Um, I do have like some free links in my Instagram bio as well for some free videos. There's a PDF there as well of like just getting started on your health journey. Um, you know, and I mean, like part of the reason that I do these kinds of calls and I have a newsletter and I put out content is that so many people just don't know. And it's really easy to be doing the wrong thing, completely convinced that you're doing the right thing because you just don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I would also say is like, if your body's exhibiting symptoms, there's obviously something going on. Right. And whether it's skin issues or allergies or brain fog, or you just don't feel good in your body, like our bodies are self healing machines. And most people haven't had that experience of feeling really vibrant in their body. That's sure. eluded them because they're on a standard American diet a very processed diet and it's very normalized. It's incredibly normalized. So I'm not faulting anybody because you don't know what you don't know. And if you've always felt not great in your body, you don't even know what is possible, right? And just like for me on that health. day five years ago when I had that car accident, I had that car accident because with my hypothyroidism, I had such insane brain fog that I was always in a brain fog. And so what mm. happened was 
was that I was a little bit slow to react. I was on the freeway, I was driving, traffic stopped, and I just was like too slow to hit the brakes. Jeez. And I went crashing into someone. Thankfully, I steered my car right, so I just hit him on his right side, and thankfully, we were in the far right lane. Um, but that all happened because I was in, I was exhausted. I was, I was like, I was in functioning with brain fog every day and I wasn't functioning at, at all. And it's so, terrifying. and, and I remember like when I used to live in that state, I would call people from my phone when I was driving cause I couldn't stay awake behind the wheel and I knew it was a problem, but I wasn't taking care of it and I didn't know how to address it. And so it was literally was a redirection from the universe to go stop, you need to stop. And so I stopped. And I took that time to go, okay, what do I need to do? Well, I'm working with all these practitioners. Nobody's really helping me. I still feel like mm -hmm. shit. Like this can't be the rest of my life. Like this cannot be the rest of my life. And so I ended up, because I've always had a passion for nutrition, I was like, well, I'm just going to go back to school and see if I can help myself, right? And in the now, feeling how I feel now and remembering how I used to feel back then, I'm like, there's no way I would go back to that version of me. This has me so emotional because you might not have been here to tell us this story. I don't know if it's the hormones from like, I just had a baby or if it's like real Taylor emotions, my normal emotional self. But I'm just imagining like the picture you painted of mm -hmm. you like being on the highway and crashing into somebody because you're just overly exhausted from a, a multitude of things going on in your life. Like from... I feel like you just pressed pause on everything, mm -hmm. which then propelled you forward. It's kind of ironic yeah. how things work, right? Like sometimes pressing pause is actually forward movement. Well, here's even the though we're in pause. I was amazing. the only, my car got totaled. So the, I hit that car and that car hit somebody else. So there were three cars that were hit that day. But my car was the only car that was totaled. And thankfully I was the only person who was hurt. And I say thankfully yeah. because I would feel terrible that I hurt somebody because of how I was trying to function back then. And so, I mean, part of the reason I'm so passionate about health is that I think a lot of people are grossly misinformed about how their body works and what their body needs because there's a lot of money behind getting people to eat poorly, yeah. right? They There's eat a bad, then they need medicine. Now they're on medicine forever. <laughs> yeah. And so it's like, and then there's a lot of social pressure too, right? Like, and so we keep doing the things that we're doing because that's what everybody around us is doing. And nobody's stopping long enough to go, hey, like, how do I really feel? Is this really working for me? Like, sure. is it? And then they're exhausted, they're depleted. And my, my thing is, if you're exhausted and depleted and you're not feeling good in your body, that alone should be enough for you to take your health seriously. Because it's not a question of, are you gonna get sick? It's when and with what, you know? At that so, point, okay. Yeah, at that point in time I when my car crashed, I was already sick, but I wasn't doing anything beyond taking two pills every morning to get myself better. I hadn't really changed my diet. So do you get the common flu? Okay, I'm gonna, I promise you, this is my, I have two last questions. Go for Number it. Number one, do you get the common flu? Do you get sick? Like with the vid and all that, none of that? Um, I did get the vid earlier this year and it got me, it took me out for 48 hours. I gave not it bad. 48 hours. And I'm like, that's like, not too bad. I was like, bitch, I'm back. <laughs> Took me out on a Wednesday. I was back in the gym by Monday. <laughs> okay, so that's the first one. Second one, do you feel pressure to be perfect because you are in this space? That was one of the questions. Like with you, you know, the practice, what you preach. Like, do you ever have a cookie? If you do have a cookie, do you make them yourself? Do you buy them I, from if organic? I make a cookie, or like... If I make a cookie, if I want a cookie, I will make it myself. If I want dessert, I will make it myself because I will only make it with whole natural ingredients that so like for example when we make desserts when i make nice cream i'm going to sweeten it with dates not agave not maple syrup like a lot of people do um and the thing is i don't feel pressure to be perfect 
I have a desire to take care of my health because my desire is to um, feel as good as possible in my body. And to me, that is worth so much more than any sort of like fast food or convenience food. And the fact of the matter is, is the way that I eat every day is convenient. It is quick. Mm -hmm. I'm not spending hours in the kitchen just because I eat healthy. I just know how to make stuff quickly. Like the other day I made like my uh, baked stuffed sweet potatoes. That's one of the easiest, fastest things to make. Throw sweet potatoes in the oven. Go back to my desk for 40 minutes to finish <laughs> up work on a Friday. And then just go back and get some black beans going with some spices, garlic and cumin. And, you know, open up some avocados and like make some guac. Like it's literally like a 10 minute recipe. Mm. Like okay. easy, 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 easy. And even like, it. yeah. So for me, it's, it's to me, like, I just think of it also from a spiritual perspective, like our body is like this divine vessel. And if we're not taking care of it, how can we really expect goodness to flow from us mm -hmm. right like all these all this energy is blocked because things aren't moving well we're not thinking well we're not feeling good it's like how can we expect good things to come from that so to me it's all about high vibe foods for a high vibe life it's really easy well thank you julie honestly <laughs> i really this was so good i love all of like i love the deep dive. I'm sorry that I went off script. <laughs> Not that there really was a script. I know I just sent you a few questions, but like I had to like flow, right? Just based on like how the conversation went. And I really appreciate your patience with baby Harrison here. Oh, baby Harrison. <laughs> he wanted cheap. to steal the show. I'm like, it's I thought cheap. I was the talent. <laughs> I want to kiss his cheeks. They're so good. <laughs> Thank you. He's so sweet. He's asleep now. So of course, go figure. But um, thank you again just for taking the time. Honestly, you are such a force to be reckoned with. I'm learning so much from you. I love seeing your content. I try to engage with your content as much as possible so that then I can keep seeing more of it. So if you all out there don't already follow Julie, please follow her. I pinned her um, handle here. It's at Julie Brar, B-R-A-R. Um, and I will have all of the show notes on my blog within the next day and a half or so um, in between naps. <laughs> yeah. So thank and you And if you have any other things you need clarified, just send me an email and I'll, and I'll okay. get back to you. Well, I thank will. you thank for you hanging so out much. for a little bit. Oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you. And you went Let's way over time. Break. Don't worry about it. I, I had sort of like put an hour in my calendar, even though I you didn't did. know. And so I was like, I'll oh, just take my time. Which Hi. dog is this? What's, what's boy or girl and name? All my girls are girls. This is Coco. Coco. So and then sweet. sister Harley likes to sit in my office between the <laughs> She's cute. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for showing us your pups as well. And I'll see you real soon. I'm sure I'm probably going to end up reaching out because honestly, this was so good. And I have so many questions. <laughs> so many questions. So thank you. Seriously, you've painted the perfect picture of like, what optimal health can look like and really planted the seeds literally for everybody out there who's thinking about how they're feeling today. And I thought it would be funny to have this on Halloween when we're all going to eat tons of candy, most likely. So no, you know what I'm going to do? I refuse. I just said to Michael this morning, I said, I refuse to participate in giving <laughs> garbage to other people's children. So we're hiding. I'm hiding in the back of the house lights off i can't do it i cannot do it i thought about it i was like i just can't i know what's in the halloween candy and i just can't do it i just we can't. have to go with our personal convictions you know so <laughs> you know we, we have to so if i could find I, like healthy candy then i would have given some out but i couldn't find any so i was like well let, i'm gonna shut the, put the blinds down in my in my office <laughs> turn off the lights and i'm just because my office is in the front of the house and the kitchen's the front of the house, so all the lights are going to go off, and we're just going to go hide in the back of the house. Hide in the back. Well, I <laughs> hope you enjoy your hiding today. <laughs> I will. I hope you enjoy your hiding today. And seriously, I appreciate you for just standing by your convictions, too. Because to your point, like you said earlier in the interview, you know, we are all 
feeling the social pressures as well in many ways. So I appreciate you again. And thank you for showing up and just being you and feeling your decisions through the lens of faith and not through fear. All right. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Julie. See you soon. (laughs) Bye.